Hey folks, uh, Ephraim here again, and this week we're going to do something really exciting and make our worm um, ready for battle and turn him into um, a worm that can actually shoot fireballs and stuff like that. So it's going to be an exciting uh, video this time. Um, but first things first, I heard that some per people have a couple problems uh, with their worm. What you need to make sure is that the, the spheres are not touching each other, otherwise you might turn in some uh, some problems. And also, I've um, I've noticed that if you click the worm, you can see that some of the spheres actually have green circles around them, which are collider meshes, and some of them don't. And we actually need them on all of those eventually. So um, it's it's actually the body part one and body part part two that need um, the colliders. And what this does, these green things, is make sure that they, they can um, actually detect collision in the world. So right now, our worm based, is based off of his eyes and his main body, but the back two parts are not having collision. So when I'm trying to walk off the edge here, you can see that um, I think that I still have these two on solid ground, but all of a sudden they sink right through. And that, of course, is not what we want. We want the whole worm to have collision. So what we do is just click body part one and then just go to uh, component and then physics and add a sphere collider to it. And that just adds a sphere collider component to that one. Let's do that again for body part two. Just click it, go to component uh, physics and add a sphere collider to it. And as you can see, now that problem should be solved. All right. Uh, let's save the scene real quick and let's get ready for some action. Okay, what we want our worm to do is we want him to shoot some fireballs. So before we can script the fireballs to shoot from the worm, we have to make a fireball, obviously. So go to game object, create other, and then make another sphere. Our game is very sphere heavy at the moment. Um, let's look at it from the Y view and just position it right in front of the worm. And to make sure that it doesn't look like the worm, let's just uh, change the material. Come over to materials here, and it says default diffuse, and you can set it to none, and then it will be just a black ball. But if you really want it to look like a fireball instead of none, go down and click the fire add um, material. And what this will do is, as you can see, it turns it into a fireball, which is pretty cool. Uh, but it's pretty hard to see so for now you can do that in the end for now I will just keep it on uh, No material and click none so that it is easier to see for us Okay, so I click this ball and it's still named sphere. Let's rename it and call it fireball um, And that we can use that name in scripting when we start shooting balls from the uh, from the worm but before we can use it in script, we need to make sure that um, we turn this ball into a prefab because prefabs are objects that live in your uh, project and as soon as you want them to appear, you can make them appear in script. So uh, that's what a prefab is for and it easily clones the same object again and again and again because we want to f shoot many fireballs. So to do that, just go to assets and then create and then click a prefab. Now, a prefab is not added to your scene, so you can't really see it in the hierarchy yet because we're not using it in our game yet, but it is it is um, stored on our drive, so you can see it in a project file. Now, this one is called new prefab. You can see it here, and uh, the prefab is currently empty. We didn't put anything in it yet. You can tell by the white box right here. When the box is white, it means it's empty. When the box is blue, it means we filled the, the prefab up with something. So just click your fireball that we made in the scene and then drag it from the hierarchy over to the new prefab and as soon as we do that the new prefab becomes blue and now it means it is filled with something and as we click it we can see that indeed this prefab now has a ball in it okay so um, let's change the name of what this prefab is called and turn it into fireball but also um, as you can see it, it updated the name here as well so now what we can do is we can delete this ball from our scene we don't need it anymore so uh, just go to edit and hit delete and it is not in our hierarchy anymore but it, it does exist in our project outside of the scene okay because so that way we can still use it um, in our script okay so next thing is um, we can start creating our script to make the worm shoot but there will be one big problem because 
where is the ball going to shoot from from our worm is it going to shoot from the middle is it going to shoot from anywhere uh, we need to define a point from where our worm can shoot the ball so to do that we'll create another sphere game object create other and hit sphere and in the Y view we make sure that it's right in front of the worm um, and then from the X view we can see that it's huge so let's scale that down into a small tiny point like this uh, move it over a little bit uh, don't move it too close to the worm because the fireball is big and as soon as it's created on this location it, you don't want it to hit the worm because then the worm loses health because of the fireball so uh, what we do next is we don't want to we don't want the fireball to collide with this point so we're gonna delete the sphere collider just re right click it and hit remove component and now you can see that green little thing is gone the green sphere around it so this way the fireball won't interfere with this point and then we uh, I need to rename the sphere into um, spawn point so let's call it spawn point because that's where our fireballs will spawn from now now when we run the game you'll notice that our spawn point is kinda like floating in the air it's not following the worm yet so instead let's just um, click our spawn point and drop it on top of the worm and now when we move around you can see that our spawn point will always stay in front of the worm and we'll make this invisible later okay done that um, now click the spawn point and uncheck uh, the mesh render and what that will do is it won't render the mesh but we can still use the axes in our script so now when we run our game the worm still um, moves around but we can't see the spawn point but it surely is there